this topic of forgiveness. And to introduce this topic, I want to take you back in time. I want to take you back in time. Many, many hundred years ago, many, many hundred years ago, over 1400 years ago, to an incident that happened at the time of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as you listen to this, I want you to remember the topic for this evening. What is the topic? I can't hear you. Barakallahu feekum. The topic is forgiveness. Once when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muslims were returning from a journey to Medina, they were returning all together. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took Aisha radiallahu anha on this particular journey. And on returning to this journey, Aisha radiallahu anha separated from the caravan for some moments and this caravan departed thinking that she was inside her hawdaj. The hawdaj refers to this type of canopy, canopy that would be placed on the camels that would house the females. It's amazing, subhanallah. Right? Today we talk about air buses. Right? Big air buses. And it's amazing that at that time they had a means of housing uh, uh, passengers on top of a camel, which has a hump on top of it, subhanallah. So they thought she was in her cabin and the, this caravan departed. And when she came back, she saw that they were gone. So Aisha radiallahu anha decided to stay put where she was and decided to take that point as a resting point and said that what, what, what I'll do is wait here for insha'Allah they will realize that I'm not there and they will turn back and find me where they last left me. Now, it was a norm of the Muslim caravans then that they would have something known or they would have somebody riding behind at a distance, following this particular caravan but at a distance. Why? In case something fell off, then this person would pick it up. We all know about cricket here, isn't it? These look like cricket faces, mashallah. So, we know in cricket, they always place somebody known as a sweeper on the boundary, isn't it? In case there's a, uh, uh, a shot that uh, is, uh, meaning in case that the batsman manages to play his drive, right? And the ball goes through the cover and it's heading towards the boundary for a four. What happens? We have the sweeper on the boundary who picks up this cricket ball and makes sure that the four is not registered. So we can call this person a sweeper. This person would ride behind the Muslim caravan and ensure that there was nothing left behind except that it would be picked up and taken to Medina. On this particular instance, Safwan ibn Mu'attal radiallahu an was the sweeper. And he was riding to Medina behind this caravan and he witnessed this object in the distance. And as he contemplated regarding this object, thinking what it could be, and he got closer and closer and closer, he realized that this was the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha. And as it was said, he recognized her from before hijab was compulsory. So he recognized her, and what he did was he got off his mount, and he let her get onto the mount, and he walked back to Medina with her on the mount, and she got back to Medina safely, alhamdulillah. However, in Medina were the hypocrites. The Munafiqun and the head of them and Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salu, the head of the Munafiqun. When they saw this particular scenery, the mother of the believers riding, riding a mount and Safwan radiallahu an bringing her in, they said this is a perfect opportunity to strike strife within the believers. And this was their, their ploy and plot. And this was their circumstance in Medina. So they started spreading rumors and accusing Aisha radiallahu anha of things which she would never ever do, which are far from her and her character radiallahu anha. They accused her of an illegal relationship with this particular sahabi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise her ranks and protect her from the evil of those who do not respect her. Amin. Radiallahu anha. So they started spreading these rumors and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his divine wisdom let these rumors spread. It was easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify Aisha radiallahu anha immediately with, with, by sending Jibreel with ayat. Not so? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to let these rumors last a month. 
or just over a month. And it became difficult and more widespread. And wahi wasn't coming down. And the situation became intense in the home of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until he decided to stay away from her until revelation came. To, to purify the matter and clarify the matter. It was a test. Allah tested the believers. And Allah tested the Sahaba. And it so happened that some Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, made a mistake. They felt prey to these rumors and affirmed some of the things that these hypocrites were saying. It was a mistake. We human beings and we're prone to mistake. They made a mistake. From the people who affirmed that which some of the munafiqun were saying was a person, a Sahabi, by the name of Mistah ibn Uthatha. Mistah ibn Uthatha radiyallahu an was from the relatives of, of Abu Bakr. In fact, the ulama say that he was the son of Abu Bakr's aunt, maternal aunt. And he wasn't well to do Mistah. So Abu Bakr for many, many years was spending on Mistah, being charitable to him. It was his relative, and Islam teaches us to look after those close to us, right? So he was spending on, and, and the general nature of Abu Bakr was that he was generous. We know how many slaves he freed when Islam came about and the slaves were being persecuted. We know this from them. Uh, Bilal radiallahu an. So Mistah was from the relatives, he was poor, and he was from the Muhajirun. Meaning Mistah accepted Islam before migration to Medina radiallahu an. And he made this mistake and affirmed it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the prescribed time revealed ayat that purified Aisha radiallahu anha ayat that will be recited till the day of Qiyamah. La ilaha illallah. This is honor for Aisha radiallahu anha. That we have ayat about her in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recited till the day of Qiyamah. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said La tahsabuhu sharran lakum bal huwa khayrun lakum. In Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentions the story, he says, don't think that what happened and the delay in purification and the test that you went through was bad for you. Instead, it was good for you. She had ayat that would be recited till the day of Qiyamah. La ilaha illallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified Aisha radiallahu anha. And when Abu Bakr radiallahu an heard these ayat, he became extremely upset with mistah. Now I ask you a question. Did he not have a right to be upset with Mislah? Did he not have a right? Yes or no? He did. This was his daughter. You my family member. I spend on you. I'm generous to you. You're supposed to be from the close ones. You're supposed to be from the ones who have good thoughts and continue with good thoughts and pick your side well when fitna arises. He had every right to be upset. This was Aisha radiallahu anha, his daughter number one. Number two, the wife of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number three, the mother of the believers. This was great upon the ummah. So Abu Bakr took a qasam. That from today, I will never spend on mistah. From today, I will never spend on mistah. What is the topic today, my dear brothers and sisters? Forgiveness. Abu Bakr radiallahu an takes a qasam that I will never spend on mistah. Again I ask, did he not have a right to do this? Did he not have a right? Indeed he did. Now what happened? This is the point of great of, of, of our interest. What happened? By Allah, by Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ayat. Revealed ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا يَأْتَلِ أُلُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُلِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And then what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ 
La ilaha illallah. Listen to this, O servants of Allah. And listen to this, O children of Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wala ya'tali. And in another qira'a, Wala yata'alla. What does this mean? Ulul fadli minkum was sa'ah. It wasn't for the people of honor and the people of financial standing and material well-being to take an oath, to take a qasam. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to here when he says it wasn't for the people of honor? Who? Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And this is an answer to those who are disrespectful to Abu Bakr radiallahu an. They're disrespectful to him, we say he's a man of honor. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so. وَلَا يَأْتَلِ أُلُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ it wasn't for those of honor and financial standing and material well-being from amongst you to take a qasam, to take a qasam, to swear by Allah, never to spend on their relatives, never to spend on the poor, never to spend on those who migrated from Mecca to Medina. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to here? Who? Mistah. Did we not say earlier he was from the relatives of Abu Bakr and he was, he was poor and he was from the Muhajirun? Did we not say that? Yes. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to Abu Bakr? It wasn't for you to do this. Instead, forgive him and pardon him. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, we're not talking about forgiving someone when there's reciprocal harm. When you've harmed them and they've harmed you and we're saying, look, let bygones be bygones and forgive them. We're talking about forgiving a person when you are in the total right and they are in the total wrong. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding Abu Bakr, instead, pardon him and forgive him. Forgive him and pardon him. And listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ إِنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, a man who was given glad tidings of Jannah whilst he was in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, do you not love for Allah to forgive you? La ilaha illallah. Do you not love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you? Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving, the most merciful. This, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam is the topic of forgiveness. This is the topic of forgiveness.